Welcome to the Cabrera Lab podcast. Hey. Hey. How's it going? I am doing awesome. I am super. How are you doing? I'm excited for today. We're going to do the last of the four oh, yeah. DSRP we'll patterns, deep dives. So we're going to talk about perspectives and the perspective circle move and all of the research we've done. Perspective, the fourth. The fourth. The patterns of cognition. May the fourth be with you. May the fourth be with you. <laughs> Always. The DSRP. So it's the P in DSRP. The yes. A, yeah. All right. So as you know, and hopefully you all know too, we've been doing these uh, slightly longer episodes going into a little more in depth of each one, D, S, R, and P, Distinction, yep. Systems, Relationships, Perspectives. We've been f- sort of following a formula where we talk about the pattern itself, the underlying elements of the pattern, our research around why and how it exists, research on the effectiveness of knowing the pattern, Mm -hmm. and then we move into, oh, we move into the moves. Like, what are the ways that you can get, yeah, that you can get better at it. Kind of more getting at the protocol of it, you know, like how how to do it. So there's a little bit of theory on the front end and then how do, how do you actually do it in your life? So perspectives are made up of two elements. Point and view. Like you can think of a, the word viewpoint mm-hmm. or point of view, the hyphenated concept of point of view. A perspective, a lot of people confuse the word perspective as being the same as the point, the looker. Right. But a perspective is actually the interaction between the looker and the looked at, Mm -hmm. the point and the view. So every perspective has two variables, not one. Mm -hmm. The interaction between who's doing, who or what is doing the looking and who or what is being looked at. So we call that, we call those variables point and view. Right. And when we think of the common word viewpoint, that's sort of, it's sort of telling you that there's two parts Mm-hmm. There's the view and there's the point. Well, and I think what's interesting and what's important for people to realize is when you change the point, it's a different perspective. When you change the view, it's a different perspective. That's right. So, for example, I can look at a sugar packet. I'm the point. The sugar packet's the view. Yeah. And that's a perspe- my that perspective. That is a perspective, yeah. Then I can look at the expo pen so it's a different view and it's my point, but it's a different perspective because yes. it's a different combination. Yes. Right? And and that, that becomes important because if you understand that all perspectives have these two variables, then you can really deeply understand how it is that we could possibly share a perspective or disagree on a perspective. So if we can have the same point and the same view, then we have the same perspective. Interesting. Right? If we if our point differs or our view differs, then we don't have the same perspective. Right. So that's the basis of all of the polarization conflict. Like we all have a point. We're all yeah. a point. And we may be looking at the same view, like, I don't know, something a glass like, full of uh, right. with it's got some water in it. Yeah. And is it half we're gonna full? go to blows over is it half full or half empty? Well, you know. Depends on your you have the same view, which is the same glass, mm-hmm. but your point is different. You're, you're emphasizing certain things. You're biasing certain things. That could be based on your experience or what you, right. your beliefs or your biases or all kinds of things go into alterations at the point. Right. right. And so the view is what's being looked at. Yep. And the point is the the looker. The looker. And that what you're getting at is the looker is... Uh, a whole bag, whole bag of, of experiences yeah. and bias and preferences and beliefs, mental models about mental things models, yeah. that we bring every time we're looking at something. Yeah, all of those things are mental models, essentially, right. they, they, whether it's beliefs or biases or experiences or whatever, all of that is collectively their mental models. And so... You know, a classic example is me and you can go to the exact same movie, watch the sit in the movie theater and watch the exact same movie, and you could interview us when we both left the movie theater, and you you know we might tell you totally different things, totally different takeaways. Yeah. We might refer, reference totally different scenes that we remember. That's right. 
you know, maybe I took some life lesson away from the that film and you took a different life lesson away yeah. or, so, you know, whatever it was, you thought different parts were funny and I thought different parts right. were funny. Maybe you hated it and I liked it. Maybe you liked it and I hated it. We, yeah. we literally watched the same movie. Same view. Same thing. Different points. Yeah. Right? Same view, different points, two, two different perspectives. Yes. I think that's, in, that's important. Yeah. Well, so we all take perspectives. Yeah. We're all perspective-taking machines, right? Yes. So and, automatically. And automatically. We can't not take a perspective. We can't not be in a perspective. See, um, I think you should slow down on that because I think that's interesting. We can't – you said a double – we can't not take a perspective, meaning we're always taking we're a perspective. We're always – yeah, and I would even distinguish between the word take and, and be in. So mm. we are always – coming from a perspective, from a point of view, mm -hmm. right? We're always coming from that. And sometimes we'll call that like our base perspective. Like our root perspective. Our root perspective, yeah. right? Yeah. And oftentimes we, we're unaware that we're coming from that perspective, right? But mm -hmm. we're all, because we are just a biological bag of mental models. Yeah. <laughs> we are always coming from a perspective. And then we we can learn to take other perspectives other than our own, yeah. right? Yeah. But there's always a root perspective or a base perspective, even when you're not willing to acknowledge it, even when you're not explicit, making it explicit. Right, meaning it's implicit, and part of our job is to make it explicit. To the degree you can, yeah. There's a saying that I say a lot, which, uh, which is choosing to be subjective is one of the greatest forms of objectivity, right? So. Yeah. To choose to be subjective is objective in a sense. Mm -hmm. Being aware of your own subjectivity is the beginning of being just a little bit more objective about things, right? Right, because you acknowledge and you know what bias you're bringing to a situation. Yes. And if you're aware of that bias, then you don't necessarily have to act using that bias. You That's can actually right. push your bias aside and say, okay, I'm going to be objective by recognizing that's my right. subjectivity and my bias. That's, in fact, one of the things that we try to develop in, in doctoral students during their doctoral studies is, sure. you know, the the ability to be very explicit about your, your particular biases in the study of whatever you're studying. Um, and, and for the same reason, right, which is we all have biases. We all bring biases or perspective to to the whatever situation that we're in. And one of the best ways to begin to be a little bit more objective about things is to recognize those biases, be aware of them, yeah. what your mental models are, what your experience is, what you're sensitive to, yeah. what you highlight, what you low light, et cetera. Um, and that's kind of the beginning of, of an attempt to be as objective as possible. Yeah, and I think it's, I think it's um, you know, I'm on a journey of life, and one of my life's goals is to actually become less and less biased. True. So I don't think yeah. people I don't think people want to be biased. I don't think they often realize where they have bias, and That's so right. bringing it to your consciousness is a way to start to work towards that goal of being unbiased. And when you're unbiased, it seems to me then you're seeing reality of situations more accurately. You're taking in information more objectively, which informs how you process it, how you act around it it's the key things. to loving reality is is yeah. trying to i mean you know it, it's it's there's a concept uh in in our constitution not in our constitution but in the framing of our country about having a more perfect union well it is actually literally written in to form a more perfect union yep. right yeah uh in the constitution but but it's also a big idea and in a, in a sense, objectivity is a little bit like that. Will we ever attain perfect objectivity? Will we ever attain yeah. a, a perfect union? No, probably not. But, but the desire and the attempt to have more objectivity, to have a more perfect union, to always get a little bit better at being objective, to be more in love with reality, to get more in alignment with reality. Will you ever be totally in alignment with reality. Reality is pretty complex. You're probably not going to have right. a mental model that matches the complexity of the universe. But you can get closer and closer. But you can get closer and closer. Yes. And, and 
perspective and the distinctions you're making and the relationships you're seeing and the part whole structures that you're looking at will will be huge in getting you a little bit closer to in the degree to which you're in alignment yeah 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 yeah, yeah. exactly well it's, it's very relevant to loving reality well so when we started all of this research many years ago we set out to think about how do we you know, we wanted to see these patterns in both nature and in the mind. And so we set up some tests and some experiments to actually look at that. Mm -hmm. And in terms of nature, let's start yeah. there, where we see perspectives exist in nature. Yes. There were a couple of study, uh, maybe two or three studies I wanted to highlight around that that I thought yeah. would be useful. The first one, which was fascinating, was if you remember, you emailed the researcher around atoms. Yeah, so one of the things that I mean, I've said this numerous times, DSRP makes a bunch of predictions about the world. Mm -hmm. And um, so far, it's got a good track record in terms of those predictions being empirically uh, proven or supported. So one of the predictions that DSRP makes, which is kind of batshit crazy, if you think about it. That's a technical it's term. That's a technical term, <laughs> yeah, um, is, is the idea that everything has a perspective. Yes. Not just people or animals that you think of as having perspective, but everything has a perspective. Every everything in the universe has a perspective or a, is a point mm -hmm. um, that has a unique view. Not everything has eyes. So when we, you know, sometimes the language gets in the way of explaining yes. this a little bit, but. We're not saying that everything has eyeballs and is literally seeing, obviously. We're not even saying that everything is sort of processing at the level that, or, or the way that humans process or that yeah. mammals process or anything like that. But in their unique way, unique to them, they are experiencing their environment, their yes. local context. Mm -hmm. And they're picking up on information in the environment and they're responding to that information mm -hmm. in, in a different way that maybe their neighbor is responding because their neighbors in a similar but slightly different environment right because they're they're occupying a different point in the universe right, right. so dsrp makes this prediction that mm -hmm. this is the case and uh, one day i'm reading it was actually a like a a, a, a news article yeah that that said you know thing. atoms have perspective yeah. And I, th I thought, oh, that's interesting. And so I, I looked to see if there was any, you know, empirical uh, work done on it or if it was just some, you know, clickbait or something. Um, pretty nerdy clickbait. But but uh, it turns out that it's an article that was published in the um, physical, physical review. review applied. Yeah, so, the, right. you know, good journal. Um, and it. I read the article. It's it's a physics journal, paper on physics, and uh, basically concludes one of the conclusions is based on this experimental data, atoms have perspective. Yes, which right? is a pretty to me kind of obvious, but but it's not. It's something that I realize people will have issues with. They, they they'll right. they'll sort of say, what, "What are you talking about?" Mm -hmm. So I wanted to make sure that, you know, in, in academia, you're, you're trying to get your research out. So you might say things a little differently in the public mm -hmm. sphere than you would say in an academic sphere, because the public might not understand the way you're parsing words in the academic space. So you, so I wanted, I, you know, I wanted to give the person that uh, leeway, leeway yeah. that maybe they're writing in a popular journal. They're yes. saying something in a way that is more popularly accessible. Right. So I wrote to the to the author. Yes. And uh, and I said, hey, I, I wanted to understand your research. Are you are you saying this f metaphorically? Right. Or are you saying this literally? Meaning, do you are you are you saying that your experimental research is is literally showing that that atoms have a point of view? Yes. Or are you sort of saying it in a in a linguistic and metaphorical way so that people can kind of grasp yeah, a, yeah, a yeah. hard to grasp concept? Right. And he wrote back and he said, "I'm absolutely saying it literally." Yeah, I mean, just for it's Zwick. Yeah. At all. At all. Yeah. 2016, 
And what he's what he did, which I think is why you and I were so interested, is he empirically tested yep. the degree to which atoms were um, having a sort of sensory perspective on their environment. Yes. He used correct me if I'm wrong, qubits, quibits? Quibits. Quibits. Yeah. He used quantum quibit, bits. Quantum bits. I'm yeah. not a physicist, sorry about that. <laughs> quibits. And he had them interacting in environments and watched the degree to which um, when they were taking a frame of reference of their physical right. environment, that they changed their behavior. Changed their behavior. Yeah. So what his work empirically showed is that they do actually do that, that That's they right. do have this sensory perspective that they take and that that adjusts how they That's interact. Right. And we see this again, we see this uh, more and more research is coming out on plants. We obviously mm -hmm. see a lot of it with, with animals, low and high forms of animals. Um, you know, plants are, are moving all day long. They're tracking the sun. So they're, you know, that's obviously they're changing their behavior based on their unique sensory experience of the of their world. Yeah. Right. So um, we're seeing this now in across again from physics to chemistry to biology to psychology to sociology to economics to obviously business and anything yeah. social has has um, perspective in it. So we're seeing this across the, the disciplines. Yes. And then there was another piece of research that we found interesting. Um, there's There was a behavior of bowerbirds. Yeah, I mean, there's hundreds of studies, yeah, yeah. Like, or but these are the really ones. thousands of studies, yeah. but hundreds of, of studies that, that we've now collected. Mm -hmm to show these different things happening. We're going to share, obviously, we can't share hundreds of studies no, today. No, but I but, picked sort of but, the top few. Yeah, the Bowerbirds is a, a fantastic example. I think most people can kind of grok that birds have perspective. What's interesting about the Bowerbird is they're they're taking perspective to, to a slightly different level. Yes. Right? Because what they're doing, it's not just that the Bowerbird actually has a pers is taking a point of view. Mm-hmm. They're taking a point of view of they're seeking a mate. Their potential mate. Their potential mate. Yeah. So they're actually kind of taking the theory of mind or the point of view of their potential mate, and they're building uh, these beautiful structures yes. to entice with colors and you know all kinds. It's patterns, also showing that they're yeah. doing part whole groupings and patterns and relationships yeah. and all yeah. kinds of things, making distinctions. Mm -hmm. But but. Along those lines, they're all with the with the intention of taking the perspective of a potential mate and attracting them sort of almost down a path that they can't refuse uh, because it's so ornately want to beautiful. Find a mate. And, yeah, they yeah. really and want Alina to find that mate. And Alina will put the picture up, yeah. right, which is interesting. But okay, but let's slow down because what's interesting about that is there's two things happening there. What you said, they're taking the perspective of what would be attractive. So they're taking the perspective of another bird, yes, in the hopes of attracting it, and then they're 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 sorting and organizing yes. things from perspectives of color and grouping and patterns and position because they're position. in the, right. they're in their nest yeah. and they're trying to attract a mate to come towards them. Yeah. So they're taking the perspective of where the mate, the is potential mate, is coming yes. from. Right. So not not only do they have a perspective, they're taking a perspective of another yes. bird. Yes. That's not even a real bird yet. It's a hypothetical potential mate. Mm -hmm. And they're organizing part whole, making distinctions of color and, and structure. Yeah. All for the for the attraction. Well, it's of, proof positive that love is what makes everything, <laughs> right? Yeah. Everybody wants to find somebody. Yeah, they're, easy, they're you know, looking for And somebody. they'll do anything for yeah, it. They'll exactly. organize rocks into color piles and patterns. Pieces I mean, of glass or whatever. Yeah, they're yeah, just finding anything, all these cool things. Anything. The final thing I thought would be really helpful, because we said everybody takes perspective. Mm -hmm. And um, what's interesting is we often say, you know, you're born with DSR and P. Yeah. But perspective is a little different. It's something we develop a little bit later uh, in life, right? Yeah. Young kids. Well, I would say we develop our D and S and R and P abilities uh, throughout life. Yes. But perspective is unique in that, when you're born, you really have 
you're you're taking one perspective, which is mm -hmm. your own, yeah. which has evolutionary benefit, right? Because you're literally self-centered. Yeah. yeah. So you're literally, you know, focused on what do I, am I hungry? Am I thirsty? Am I, yeah. do I want comfort? Do I want, you know, did I poop my pants or whatever? Obviously you're not you're conceptualizing all that quite yet. There's but a need. <laughs> there's a need, right? And, yeah. and you're focused on that need and that need alone and you cry or you, you know, whatever. And so you are taking a perspective that, per, that perspective is the one that you're in, right? Yeah. Children uh, up to about, four or five years old, um, they're not really taking, they're not doing what the bowerbird's doing. They're doing the first perspective of the bowerbird, which is they have a perspective, Yeah. but they're not doing the second part of what the bowerbird's doing. Meaning they can't take the perspective of another bird. Yeah, which is sometimes called theory of mind, meaning yeah. that you, you can see your own way of seeing things, but you can also have a theory of somebody else's mind and see that their mind might see things differently than your mind, which is literally yeah. perspective taking. Yeah, but young kids can't do that. Kids up to about four years old, they're just taking the one perspective, their perspective. But around about four years old, five years old, they start to develop because they're starting to be a little bit more functional, a um, little bit yeah. more social mm -hmm. out on the wild kind of thing. Um, so they need to start taking perspective, mm -hmm. right, of other yeah. of others. Yeah. And there's a great experiment called the Sally Ann experiments, yes. which are w really fantastic experiments. Um, that where, sort of proved this point. That show th the, that show this. Theory yes. of mind comes exactly. with Yeah. I don't know if we want to go in. Do we want to go in? I think the we Sally should. So Ann there's thing? Sally and there's Ann. So Sally and Ann are dolls. Mm -hmm. And the, the researcher is hanging out with a kid. Um, and. And they're kind of doing like a puppet show, mm -hmm. in a sense. Yeah. And Sally has a basket. Yep. And Anne has a little box, mm -hmm. right? And the basket has like a cover, and the box has a cover. Yeah. And Sally, the in the in the puppet show, the kids watching this in yeah. the puppet show, Sally puts uh, a marble into the basket. Into her basket. Into her basket. Yes. And then Sally leaves the room. Mm-hmm. In the puppet show. She leaves the stage. <laughs> yep. And then uh, Anne takes the marble out of Sally. Anne's a, a little little minx. She's, she's, <laughs> she's mischievous. mischievous. <laughs> she takes the marble out of Anne's basket, covers it, and then puts it in her box and closes the box. She stole it. And the her. kid is watching this. So the kid knows the marble's in the box. Yes. But Sally's outside, so Sally doesn't know that the marble's in the box. Sally mm -hmm. thinks that the marble's where she put it, in the basket. In the basket. Well, now, in the play, and then Anne leaves. Yeah. Sally comes back. Mm -hmm. And the researcher asks a very simple question, which is, where is Sally going to look for the marble? The researcher asks the kids that they're... They ask the kid. Where is Sally? Where is go? Sally going to look for the marble? Mm -hmm. Well... Pre four or five years old, pre them taking perspective or theory of mind, the kid will say, well, Sally's going to look in the box because the kid knows that the marble's in the box. Right. Yeah. So the kid is not able to say Sally's mental model of the world is different than mine. Yeah. The kid just has their mental model. The, the marble's in the box. Sally will look in the box. Mm -hmm. But around about four or five years old, kids will say... Wait a minute. I saw that happen, right? Mm -hmm. The marble go in the box. But yeah. Sally didn't see that. Sally was outside. So she doesn't know that that shift happened. Right. So Sally's going to think that the marble's still in the basket. And therefore, Sally's going to look in the basket. Right. And that is a big shift. Yeah. Right? That's a big shift. And you're saying they, they showed that, that that ability to take that other perspective was not found in kids unless they were four or five years old. Four or five years old, and and uh, as an additional uh, understanding that we that we got, so and this has been since done on um, you know uh, primates and mm -hmm. other things, but the, the original experiment was done with Down syndrome kids, uh, neurotypical neurotypical kids. kids, and autistic kids. Yeah, and what they found was. The Down syndrome kids and the neurotypical kids would would get it right around four or five years old. Autistic kids less so. So uh, that, that's why we we know th that's part that of the challenge. Part of the challenge with autism 
Yeah. Some forms of autism is perspective taking, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. So that's really, but but generally speaking, humans get this ability for theory of mind around four or five years old. So if you have little kids, mm -hmm. it's really fascinating to yeah. watch them when they only have this uni perspective. Yeah. And then as they get to closer to the four or five mark, somewhere in that region, mm -hmm. um, you're going to start seeing them take theory of mind and, and things really uh, they all get a little bit more robust yeah, and complex yeah, yeah. In, the, in that period, as we all know. Well, and the other thing that I think is interesting is um, if you go back to our our study of 34,000 people, what people tend to do and tend mm -hmm. not to do, and you you take that the results from the 34,000 people and you distill it down to if you had a team of 10. Yeah. We showed that, you know. The it, first five out of 10 people get stuck. Yeah. They're asked to do something or solve what to problem, do or whatever. Yeah. Yeah. Five out of 10, the other five. Yeah. They uh, make identities of, of distinctions. Yeah. And ignore the other for part whole. For part whole. Two and a half out of ten are zoom able to in, break things down into parts, down but they in. don't actually put them back in a wider context. So yeah. they zoom in, but they don't zoom out. Zero people zoom out. Zero people zoom out. Two two and a half people zoom in. So then for relationships, which is the one we just did, it's down to one and a half people. One and a half people see any relationships. Between and among which is ideas. Crazy. Well, so here's the news. So for perspective, we're down to less than one percent takes more than a single perspective. Less than one person. Less, sorry, out of less 10. than one person. Yeah. Yeah. Well, less than one person out of 10 takes. takes perspective, right? That's right. And zero people recognize that they have a perspective. Which is frightening. Yeah. Zero out of 10. I mean, we've all been there, yeah. right? Zero out of 10 people realize that they're taking a perspective. So that, I mean, again, what this research shows us mm -hmm. is what we tend to do, but it also importantly shows us what we tend not to do and what we tend not to do in the DSRP structure is what we need to do more of. Right. So yeah, keep making identities, but see the other. Right. Yeah, keep breaking things down into parts, but see the whole. And we need to get more people to to do that. See some relationships and get more people to see relationships uh and and zoom into the relationships, mm -hmm. you know. Yeah. And see not just the action, but the reaction to things, you know. Well, and, and also to look at webs of causality. Webs of causality. Cause That's right. Here. See that you have a perspective, a point of view. Yes. And see that others have different points of view. Well, and I think one of the things, the, there were a few things that we were not good at in terms of perspectives. So, A, we're not good at being explicit about the perspective we're taking. Most of our perspectives are implicit. We don't even... Meaning acknowledging. Yeah, we don't, sorry, yeah. we don't even know that we're taking a perspective. We just take it. We either don't know mm -hmm. or we manipulate yeah. and pretend that there isn't one. That's right. A lot of the political things that are happening across the spectrum mm -hmm. is manipulations of perspective that are quite purposeful. Very they, purposeful. They're very pers purposeful, but they're not transparent about the perspective. Right. So right. then, you know, the bias doesn't show. So that's right. how we get people, right? Yeah. And even though we're, even though we're technically capable of taking other people's perspectives from age five on, we don't, we don't, we don't no, take yeah, other people's sure. perspectives. And yeah. we definitely don't look for or take multiple perspectives other you know other perspectives when we're thinking about things we take right. only ours and then the other thing we found was that most people um that we what we don't do is we don't take we tend to associate perspectives with um living things animate things things that have eyeballs mm -hmm. we're not really good at taking conceptual perspectives that's right right we're, yeah. we we tend to be more i could take the perspective of a frog because of eyeballs but i can't take the perspective of sustainability because it's, That's right. you know, it's a constant. That's another prediction that DSRP makes, which is really quite profound, actually, uh, it, which is that any any concept or thing, mm -hmm. any concept or thing can be a point of view. Yes. Meaning you can, you, obviously, you, you I think most people have an easy time understanding that another person could be a point of view. Yes. 
they understand that a frog could have a point of view or an elk could have a point of view. Uh, maybe they understand that amoeba yeah, could have a point of view, right? Right. That's kind of animate. Yeah. That it, they start to have more difficulty around that, you know, a rock or a plant or a, or an atom, and yeah. then and then the I, the concept of financial. Yeah. Well, you can take a financial perspective, yeah. right? The concept of economic, the concept of uh you know structural yeah the concept of dynamical right you can take a structural perspective you can take a dynamical perspective you can take a mm -hmm. you can take a perspective from any of those constructs concepts mm -hmm. but you could also take a perspective from concepts like red yeah let's look at this room from the perspective of red oh yeah. it there is nothing red no, or cup, oh your cup is cup red is right red. so certain things yeah. will be highlighted and everything else will be low lighted right yeah but you could also take the perspective of this cup my cup on your cup and then mine feels short yeah exactly because yours is you're tall. kind of anthropomorphizing i your anthropomorphize cup, my cup Right, so you can literally take a point of view of anything. That's what this this remarkable human mind is able to sort of put itself into all kinds of things and see the world from those places if yes. you train it to do that. So yes. we're actually remarkable perspective taking machines if we train ourselves. If to we're be. aware of it. If we're aware of it, yeah. and we're aware of the importance of it. And we're aware of the the good effect of it. Yeah. Um, you know, we are v actually actually can be very very good at it. Yeah, and I mean the way I think about it is, awareness of these things leads to more alignment with reality, and that alignment leads to better actions. So I was going to make the connection to the fish tank study. So when we when we showed uh, a group of people a fish tank and they mm -hmm. described what they saw. And then we taught them about perspective, point view perspectives. Uh, and then we asked them to describe it again. We had the same results that we did previously with D, S, and R, which is we saw increased complexity in their answers after learning about perspectives. Highly statistically Highly statistic, significant yeah. increases, yeah. Um, the other thing we should mention, just because we're on that sort of continuum, is we also did the study around confidence and competence. Mm -hmm. And we're seeing the Dunning-Kruger effect. And that was also true for perspective taking that we're... Which is people are more confident yeah. in their abilities than they, than they are competent. Yes. That's not great. Yeah, but I think that's pretty common with perspective. Common. I think you see yeah. it a lot. I mean, you remember Bob. <laughs> do you remember Bob? I do, because you tell the story. And, yeah. All right, I'll make you go find the Bob story. I won't say it again. No, no, no. Tell you should tell that story. It Just was don't funny. tell any any uh, identifying. Well, first of all, it's not or, actually Bob. Yeah. We were at a big session with a, a, a large group from a very large company. Yes. And people. We always name everybody Bob. That just for your. For just to sake. give everybody the name Bob. We were at a very, uh, a very specific um, de professional development uh, executive training with executives. I would think there were probably a uh, fifty or so. It was an executive training with executives. Yeah, <laughs> that's very executive. Quibits, cubits, like who knows? Executive squared. I'm good with not knowing everything. <laughs> I'm confident in not knowing everything. Um, so we remember. We were at this executive education. We were running executive education yeah. with a group of yeah. uh, executives, obviously, because it's executive education yes. from a very large company. We had we had uh, we had broken them into groups, and they had all taken the TQ, the thinking quotient. The thinking quotient. So they had gotten their scores on yeah. DSRP, their skill levels yeah. for DSRP. They also were taught told their confidence and their competence level. So, they're so this is just, I think people might be confused by this. So this is a test that we call the thinking quotient test. Yeah. And it's, and this is a terrible example, but but uh, it, it because people are familiar with the Myers-Briggs, it's like the Myers-Briggs of thinking, let's say. It's a, it's a test that you take, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. 
So Bob and all of his colleagues take this test. They take in the test. They're all given their results. And they're at this table. And they're all reading they all their personal results, but yeah. they're not reading each other's results. They're reading their own results. And Bob is reading his results at the table, and he says out loud, he says, oh, my gosh. He said, I am terrible at taking perspectives. <laughs> and everybody at the table busted out laughing. Yeah. And they're like, Bob, how did you not know that? Because they knew Bob was not yeah. good at taking But Bob thought he was great at it, yeah. which is a huge blind spot. Bob was a walking Dunning-Kruger effect. <laughs> he was. He took it in stride, though. He did. He kind of <laughs> he, he kind of had to s- swallow hard, but but then he, he was like, oh, okay. Mm-hmm. Everybody at this table knows what I didn't know, what this test just uh, showed me. Yeah. And uh, I got to... Take a hard look at that perspective taking. Yeah. Uh, Meta perspective. Yeah, it was a, it was a big moment for Bob. It was a big moment for Bob, and I will say Bob really took yeah, it to he heart. Was, he was pretty good, about and it. he really worked on improving his perspective taking. That's right, and did very well. Um, okay, so you alluded to the fact that we're going to talk about our studies on um, perspective taking in the mind. Yeah. So we started with um, just wanting to see. Uh, how, if and how people could see, could take perspective on a mm-hmm. group of objects. They were given um, a group of squares. Some were blue, some were orange. Yep. And they were asked, if you could only see blue, how many objects would you see? And what we found is that 90% of people got the right answer, which is that there were four blue squares, right? Mm-hmm. So that was one way that we showed people are actually taking perspective and are able to discern among a group of things using a you know uh, a perspective that they were given. Yeah, it's kind of a baseline question. It's kind of a question that you might find on a an IQ style test. Yeah, and so it's a very basic question, but it's just it's sort of getting them to be in the mind of somebody who could only see blue, and then right. what would you see if you could only see blue? Right, you obviously wouldn't see the orange, and right. therefore you would see a certain number of squares. Right. So, yeah, then then we move to the fish tank, extended fish tank studies where we, we ask them, so rather than asking them to just tell us what you see. Yes. Open-ended. Uh, in, the, in this particular study, we showed them this fish tank scene, and then we ask them to identify certain things. Yes, by clicking on them. Right. So we, in other words, we yeah. highlighted using a perspective prime, we ask them to find something, mm-hmm. right, mm-hmm. by clicking on them. So we can see the heat map of where they click. So, for example, we said click on the red and green plant. Yes. Uh, one of the things we noticed in all of the descriptions of the original fish tank study was nobody mentioned the red and green plant. No. Not a single person mentioned the red and green plant. No. Every, almost everything else in the scene, yeah. statistically across the group, was mentioned, but not the red green plant for some it's reason. A very lonely plant. So we plant. knew that the red green plant was not something that people kind of normally saw. normally saw. Yep. So we wanted to just you know quick test. Hey, if if we if we ask people to find the red green plant, will they, they find, find it? it? Well, of course they yeah. do, right? Because yep. they we've shifted their perspective to sort of ignore everything else and zero in and zero in mm-hmm. on the red green plant yeah right 82% of people got yeah. the red green plant that's right which yeah. you know zero had seen it before yeah until yeah. we had made it yeah. and then they clicked on things like the filter the fish's eyeball and they all did that well in between 85 and 92% that's right but then remember the liver yeah, so we wanted to ask people. So we we kind of baselined it with the eyeball. Can mm-hmm. you can you find the, a fish's eyeball? And mm-hmm. every you know everybody clicks on the uh, you know the, an eyeball pretty easily. It was the highest rate. The highest rate of all of them. Of everything we asked yeah. them to click, the eyeball was so best. easy to click on a, yeah. on a fish's eyeball. But then we asked them click on the fish's liver. Well, there is no visual representation of a fish's liver. But they were able, and and this is where we see that they're able to do part whole and perspective taking simultaneously, right? 
because they basically took the fish, took it apart in their mind, identified where a fish liver would go, right? So the relationship between the liver and the fish's anatomy and and then clicked, right? Yep. And th and they're able to find something that li literally liverly literally <laughs> isn't in the uh isn't in visible. the picture. It's not visible in the picture. There is no yeah. fish liver in the picture. But they clicked on it with the same rate of the things that were actually visible. Yeah, which is amazing. Which is interesting. Yeah, really interesting. That they could suppose where it would be and with their mind's eye. With their mind, not their eyeballs, yeah. but visually. But with their mind's eye, they are able to take a perspective and find a, a distinct thing. Yes. In a part hood of fishness. So then we had one more thing for them, which is we asked them, listen to this, to click on the not fish, not vase, not castle, not plant. Like click on. As a meaning all of those, yeah. click on something that's other, none of that's those none things. of those things. And surprisingly, yeah. what we found was fewer than like 55% could click on something that wasn't those things. Yeah. Which is interesting because the thing that wasn't any of those things was the water. Yeah. Basically, all they had to do was it's click like on like a, basically a space that was kind of not yeah. anything. Yeah. But they couldn't do it. Well, they did it to the, to what degree? 55%. 55%. Yeah, down so. from like 85 and 90%. Yeah. yeah. Which yeah. is interesting because it, it, it interacts with what we did in distinctions. Yeah. Not objects are tough. Um, then we wanted to test conceptual versus, I'm sorry, non-animate, non-eyeballed perspectives versus uh, anthropomorphic. Animate. Animate. Yeah. We sometimes call this conceptual versus anthropomorphic, but anthropomorphic is a big term that just means kind of human-centered. Yes. So things that are animate with eyeballs, you know, people have an easier time taking perspective mm -hmm. um, from things with eyeballs. Yeah. Imagining a perspective, imagining that a thing with eyeballs has perspective. They don't have an easier time taking that perspective, but they have an easier time imagining that something with eyeballs could have a perspective. Yes. And things with eyeballs tend to be more animate. Right? Yes. And so we asked them to describe the tank from both the perspective of the fish. Yeah. And also the from a, a, a financial perspective. Yeah. So a conceptual financial is yeah. a conceptual perspective. Right. Again, with their mind's eye looking at something, but in this case, not a liver, which is a tangible thing, yeah. but something a little less tangible, like financial, that has a lot of different yeah. components to it. Yeah. Well, and what we found statistically yeah. is that they took, what A, that when you give them a perspective, they can take it, yeah. the, the point. Yeah. But the things in the view that they saw based on changing the point, they changed. Yeah. The things that they saw changed when you yeah, changed the point absolutely. from which they were looking at it. Yeah, so when they look at the tank from the perspective of the fish, they see a whole different world mm -hmm. than when they look at the tank from the perspective, financial perspective. Right. So, wow, that's interesting. You know, yeah. wow, that's point view. Yeah. The other thing I think that's interesting here that might not be totally obvious is because because sometimes when you hear the way research is done, you go, no duh. Like you yeah. ask them to find the red and green plant and they found the red and green plant. Like, why is that interesting? <laughs> when you give people a perspective to take, they're very good at it. Yep, that's right. If, if they're left to their own devices, they're very bad at it. Yes. They don't do it, mm -hmm. right? That's that's really remarkable, meaning there's this thing called perspective taking. It has these two variables, point and view. It's really, really important across for success in all domains of life. And humans are really good at it if you ask them to do it. Mm -hmm. But if you don't ask them to do it, there is a high probability they won't. Right, because you're <laughs> right. I mean, just like follow that logic. Wacky. It's uh, it's it 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 is like a it's like a uh, if you follow the breadcrumb of that logic, it's sort of pointing to if we bring perspective point of view into awareness and into consciousness, make mm -hmm. people aware of how important it is, they'll do more of it and they'll actually get really good at it. Yeah. 
Exactly. But if we don't, they won't. Well, and and that's the difference between um, making it conscious versus unconscious, right. right? Which is what we've been talking about. Metacognition or just awareness, yeah. Okay, so the there are a couple more. There's a lot in, in perspective because yeah. we did some pretty interesting things. So the next thing we did is we wanted to see um, or, or I guess get a, a sense of could you have the same view, the mm -hmm. same object in view, and when you change the context or the point, how would that change what you saw? So we wanted to test that a bit more. Mm -hmm. Remember what is what's yeah. that? And we wanted to use something that was fairly, you know, well known or something like that. Uh -huh. Yeah. So we call this the uh, bat study. Yeah. So we showed them a picture of a bat. A baseball. A baseball bat. bat. A wood baseball bat. Yeah. A wooden baseball bat. Uh -huh. Just a picture, and we said, "What is it?" Yes, and they had four options: um, bat, firewood, weapon, and hat. So they could pick between those four. And like you would think, mm -hmm. a vast majority of people picked bat. Right. right. Then yeah, we showed them the same picture, asked them the same question, but we did one little piece of priming. Right. Right. Yes, which is when you're in your home and an intruder comes in. So you're in your home. An intruder has in. entered your home. Mm -hmm. You look around. You see this thing. What is it? What is it? And the options are the bat. same options. Bat. It's a baseball bat. It's a... Firewood, weapon, or hat. So what's interesting about this is 44% of people said weapon. And 54% still said bat. Yeah. So just but how many people in the first, in the baseline said weapon? 1%. 1%. So just. So you got a 43% increase in mm -hmm. people saying that it's a weapon. Right. So right. Th so what they saw changed yeah. based on that change in the, in the sort of pers the point and, yeah. the, and the context. Yeah. Okay. So then we, we did one more. We said, okay, you're lost and alone in the woods and it's cold. Yeah. What is it? bat, firewood, weapon, or hat. And 61% of people said firewood. So that's firewood. a bigger shift, yeah. right? Where only 2% had said that in the in the baseline. Mm -hmm. So what, what that shows is exactly what you were saying is change the point, change the view. When you change the, you know, the point. The context. The context. Yeah. Then the view is going to. They'll change their see. perspective in a changing context. Yeah. Right. Even for the same object. For the same object. That's pretty cool. It is cool. Uh, it, it's a cool study. And, I, you know, there's a second story that happened after the study, which mm -hmm. which just made me laugh. Um, and probably I shouldn't tell this story because I think a lot of folks aren't familiar with the whole publication process and scientific publication. And, the, you yeah. know, they're, they, they assume like most – people assume about systems that they're not you know intimately aware of that it it's just this like perfect system and it or maybe they don't i don't know maybe they assume <laughs> it otherwise but it has lots of flaws scientific publishing needs a reboot yes and uh you know but we have this review process it's good intention but it yeah. has a lot of flaws it's an and, and you have a good review you have a review process so you submit your paper to the journal they and have then reviewers. they have reviewers, and those reviewers criticize your paper or, or whatever, and, and then you go back and forth a little bit. Okay. Anyways, one of the reviewers is looking at this particular study, and they say, uh, this is a ridiculous study because it's a, it's a bat. In all three examples, it's a baseball bat. Many people might. Which is a perspective, yeah. right? I just found that to be remarkable. I mean, it this guy was going to – this guy wanted to go to – throw down with with the fact that how how could you say that it's firewood how could you say that it's a weapon because it is a because bat. it is by definition a baseball bat mm -hmm. and you're like but is it a baseball bat if you dropped it if you dropped it you know from a plane into a tribe an uncontacted tribe in the amazon is it a baseball bat then they don't even know what baseball. You know, is it is it a baseball bat to a, a, a gaggle of squirrels? <laughs> I mean, what makes it a baseball bat? 
Yeah, I mean, our I, life experience. Is it a baseball bat to to somebody who comes from a country where there's no baseball? Right. It's like and the has gods never must seen, be crazy. Yeah, the like gods must the, be crazy the Coke with the bottle. Coke bottle. The Coke yeah. bottle. It's the same thing. Like out of context, what is it? Like what? Yeah. So like, it's only a baseball bat because we've decided that this this is a baseball bat, right? But mm -hmm. you change the perspective and it becomes something totally different. Yeah. The whole point is that we distinguish things based on a perspective. Yeah. Right. We we make distinctions based on a perspective. And this is super important because if, if you understand distinctions, we talked in that episode that distinctions are made up of an identity and an other. Yep. Well, once you understand that every distinction has these two variables, identity and other, mm -hmm. you also sort of come to the realization that in order to get the identity, since the other is also in some other alternative universe, an identity, mm -hmm. and the identity in a different, on a different dimension is, a, is an other, well, you start to realize, oh, this distinction I'm making is from a perspective. It's from the perspective that's friendly to this being the identity and this being the other. Yes. But we could take a, a, another, we could make another distinction from another perspective. Yep. So this is perspective one. But perspective two, this could be the identity and this could be the other. Yes. And so we see that that this identity has its own unique perspective and this identity has its own unique perspective. Yes. And in this case, the other is being defined in terms of this identity. And, and in this case, together. the other is being defined in terms of this. Yes. Identity. So in mathematics, when we say X in terms of Y, we're making a distinction from a particular perspective, from the perspective of Y. Yes, that's right. Right? We're seeing X mm -hmm. from the perspective of Y. Well, how many times you asked a question when you're like, well, in what context? Yes. In what context are you asking me that question? Because I can't right. answer it until I know the until perspective, know. Yeah. what the in terms of is. Exactly. Right? Exactly. So they're everywhere all the time. All the time. But we're not aware of them. And in fact, they're the thing we're the least aware of. That's right. Which means we should work on it. We should work on it. So let's talk about how we work on it. How we work on getting better at taking Well, we did a study on that. We did. The moves. The That's moves right. study. And, it, yeah, you start with the, you start with this basic idea that, 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 that you have this pattern called perspectives. Mm -hmm. And it's made up of a, a view and a point. And those are the elements of perspective, right? This thing equals that. It's the interaction between these two things, right? Yep. And then you understand that this is happening universally mm -hmm. in mind and in nature. Mm -hmm. And then and then we have, you know, the move, right? Which the move is what we call P-circle. So we, we discovered that these, these moves are very powerful. Yes. Right. And they're kind of just versions of this pattern. I, yeah, I, I think of them as the actionable, uh, the action you can take to see and be better at this pattern. Yeah. And a move is sort of a manifestation of That's the right. pattern. And, uh, and these moves are, are basically just predicated on a question. Yes. What we sometimes call a think query, like a, a thinking yeah. question that is also a query, a, a question. Yep. So P circle is sort of like, uh, can we look at X mm -hmm. from different different percentage. points of view? Yeah. Right. Yeah. So that's right? so that's the question. So here's the question. Here's the move, and here's the pattern. Yeah. This is a pattern. Yep. Right. And so, what does that look like in terms of the move? It's very simple. You just uh, let's say you have X over here. Well, you can look at X from a circle of, you can encircle X with Perspective. perspectives. P's. Points. With points. Mm -hmm. Points of view. Yep. And then you can see how X changes, what, how the parts of X change, how the relationships change, how the distinctions that you make change, yeah. how X itself changes. Yes. Based on the different points of view. Yes. Right? And it doesn't have to be this many. It, and a P-circle could could be two or more perspectives, essentially. Yeah. 
So let's do let's do a couple. Okay. Because people like to see what we yeah. actually do with them. So let's make X. Um, let's see. Let's make X a piece of art. Art. Let's do something simple. One of the things one of my favorite art teachers. She knows who she is. Uh, originally from Fairfax, Virginia, um, showed us was oh, yes. that that she teaches students to look at art from color, line. Color. Yep. Line. Uh, emotion. Emotion. And what was the other one? Oh, shading. 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 Shapes. Yeah, maybe shapes. So it can be whatever you want yeah. it to be, right? But just think about this: you look at a piece of art, mm -hmm. and and first you see the richness of the color. Then you pay attention to the lines: are they straight? Are they squiggly? So you see different parts of this piece of art. Yeah, so like in modern terms, this sugar packet could be a piece of art, right? Sure. Lots of things can be art. Somebody paid a lot for that. <laughs> right. <laughs> so, you know, from the perspective of color, they're utilizing yellow and blue uh, only and mm -hmm. a little tiny bit of red. Mm -hmm. From the perspective of line, you know, it's there's no straight lines except, well, there's some straight lines here, mostly curved, some curved, some cursive. Mm -hmm. Right. That's so right. we it changes what you look at. Yes. By looking at the from the point. Yeah, it changes. What and so see. what she was doing with students is getting mm -hmm. them to see the art from lots of different kinds of places and then mm -hmm. bringing it all together into, yeah. you know, an appreciation of, of art. That's right. And a love of art. That's right. So let's do another one. So let's say you have uh, an initiative at work. Yeah. I try to give various examples. So you have an initiative at work. Work initiative. And so then you're going to need to look at that initiative from many different points. Let's right? just do three to show them that a yeah. perspective circle doesn't have to have yeah. a certain so, number of points. It could have any number. Two so or let's more. say you do it from, I don't know, engineering, sales, and customers. So that initiative, what you focus on in that initiative will be different if you're taking the point of the Customer. customer, like what does the be, user want? Yeah, so the customer might be interested in value and price and mm -hmm. things like that. Yeah, sales might be interested in how know, are they going to sell it? How are they going to sell the it? What's the messaging? Mm -hmm. uh, you know, what 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 is the the value statement? Profit and commission and things like that mm -hmm. on the on the and then engineering is interested in the technical specs of and building it of building it whatever yeah. it is around. Yeah. Yes. That's a peace circle. You yeah. can do peace circles on anything. It's a universal, a universally applicable thing. So let's say we wanted to really understand what the different things are mm -hmm. that each one of these points is seeing in this thing. How would we map that? How would we yeah, so now you're talking about kind of a move mashup. So you're taking, say, zoom in, mm -hmm. which is breaking things down into parts, and peace circle mm -hmm. and combining together. them together. So, for example, we want to know, like, work initiative from different perspectives is going to have different parts. Well, we can use, for example, color, you know, to, to we'll say, customer, the customer perspective is going to be red, mm -hmm. right? So when we look at this product or work initiative, let's say it's a product that we're developing, they're going the to customers care. are going to care about the value, um, right? Yeah. And they're going to care about the price, price right? And, and the features. Yeah, and the features, right? Mm -hmm. Well, the, the let's say engineering, you know, engineering's let's say blue. Well, yep. they're going to care about features too, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. And yeah, the well, but that's their focus. That's mo mostly their focus, and sales is going to focus on maybe. Yeah, make sales. Let's make color. sales green. You know, sales is going to be focused on um, messaging. Yes. Right. Yep. And so, also. And also price. And communicating and, value. And communicating value. Right. So. So you can see. So you can sort of see uh, the different, you know, and, and and in seeing that, perhaps you would say to yourself, well, as we roll this out, we really want engineering to focus on. We want engineering to focus here. We want engineering to focus here. We want sales, you know, to focus here 
you know, or something like that, because they're not focusing here. We want everybody on the same page of what matters, messaging, value, price, and features. Yes, but the point of this whole visualization in this move is being able to discern what what are the things that different perspectives are focused on. Focused yeah. on yeah. And then identifying gaps, similarities, yeah. things you might want to change. Yeah. And and those kinds of things. Or you might say you might say actually the the main thing that matters is value to the customer. So mm -hmm. Even though these are all important, mm -hmm. we have to we have to have everybody focused on value, right? right? Because they have to build the value, they have they to sell have, it, exactly. and they have and to. And that's what value they care about they is the value. Because it. then, if they value it, then the price can be higher, and blah blah blah. Yeah. So it becomes, you know, you you obviously are going to work it out. However, what is ever important to you, mm -hmm. but it gives you a sense of this thing can be looked at in different ways. And at the same time, we need everybody to look at it in a similar way and also with their different lens. Yes. And the only other thing I would add, which which is interesting about this, is let's say engineering and sales are having a disagreement. Mm -hmm. Well, it might be because they're focused on and seeing different parts of this initiative and not seeing that the other one is seeing different parts. Yes, exactly. So they're talking about the same thing but their, their focal part of that thing is mm -hmm. different. And they have to see that they have different perspectives. Different perspectives, on it yeah. In order to understand each other. That's right. Yeah. yeah. So you might, you know, you're essentially saying that there's a relationship between sales and engineering. And if that relationship is strained, mm -hmm. it's largely because of their differences in perspective. So if you right. can, at the very least, get them to understand the other's perspective, to see the other. Yeah. Distinction, identity, other, yeah. and to take the other's perspectives, then then you can get this relationship real functional, rather than you know, rather yeah. than dysfunctional. To me, the 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 whole point of perspective circle is first to recognize that there are more perspectives than yours, mm -hmm. and to be able to then say, hey, well, what's your perspective on this, yeah. and then dive deeper to understand the difference in how I see it versus how you see it. That's right. And then you come to an understanding of each other, and then sometimes you actually have to build a shared perspective. That's right. To sometimes move forward on things. Yeah, so, I mean, you just kind of went through D and S and R and P, which is mm -hmm. you've got to see something. you got to see the, recognize the other and identity other. you got to recognize the other. Mm -hmm. Recognize that the other is its own identity that has its own perspective on things. Yes. And then be curious enough to, to sort of delve into, well, what is that perspective on something that we care about, mm -hmm. that we're both viewing? Yes. How, how do you organize the parts? Which parts do you see? Which relationships? How are, how are things related? Because that's going to change the system that yeah. you're looking at. Yeah. The relationships and the parts and what it's a part of and all that kind of stuff is going to change based on the perspective. So there's, a, there's an old saying, which is... Mm -hmm. When you change the way you look at things, the things you look at change. Yes. And that's really deeply DSRP because mm -hmm. if we change the perspective, the distinctions we're making change. The relationships that we see or don't see change. Mm -hmm. The part whole systems, the part whole organization of things changes. Yeah. And that is different. That makes different pers – that's what makes perspectives different. Yes. Is that we're making different distinctions, organizing things differently and seeing yeah. different relationships. Right. And incidentally, we, we did a study on these moves with mm -hmm. complex things, complex issues. That we asked people to. Yeah, we gave them a scenario, mm -hmm. a problem scenario. Um, basically, it was a, around a community issue. They read the scenario and we asked them to think it through and they recorded, you know, they we captured how they thought it through then we taught them just this move of taking a perspective circle, and then we had them reapproach in a minute. In a minute, we yeah. taught them in Literally a, minute. a minute. So we taught them in less time than today. Yes. Than than this podcast. Yeah. Yes. Uh, we taught them the perspective circle move, and then we had a third party rate the quality of their answers before they learned the move and after they learned the move. Yeah. And we found what was it? Four point four seven increase. 
447 percent increase in their ability to solve problems, have a more clear decision making process, and all that. And that's not insignificant. No, but it's highly statistically. That's pretty significant. significant. <laughs> you know, and I think when you see research this, jokes. oh, I didn't know there were <laughs> research jokes. <laughs> Given given that I'm the least funny person yeah. in our family. Wouldn't that be cool? That would be like a research comedian. No. No. <laughs> That's not no? something I that can imagine. That wouldn't be funny. That was funny. I thought that was funny. That's because you're a nerd. You're both I nerds. Know. I um, think there should be a whole like world of research science comedians. Well, that's your perspective. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's funny. Anyway, what I was saying was... It's not just increases in problem solving. It's also connected to empathy, pro-social oh, behavior, sure. yeah. how we relate to That's one really another. Important. Just the idea that, oh, there's more perspectives in the world than just mine, and maybe I should bother to find out what they are. That completely transforms. Yeah, you bring up a really important point, which is a lot of folks think of like, uh, you know, DSRP and systemic thinking as being, uh, you know, very analytical, very sort of you're mm -hmm. analytically oriented, right? Mm -hmm. You're trying to figure something out. You're trying to solve a problem. And that's true. It is. You are trying to solve problems. You're trying to mm -hmm. figure things out. You're trying to make better decisions understand systems better, all that stuff. But they, they think it's completely divorced from the emotional, social, and personal, personal and, mm -hmm. uh, and even ethical side of things. And, and we should probably do another whole podcast on the, on the ethics of, of, cool. of these patterns. Write that down. We're going to do one on that. Um, that would be good. You know, there are really huge ethical, social, uh, amp you know, emotional implications of these patterns um for example you know you can't have empathy you can't have sympathy you can't have compassion without perspective right right those things don't exist they go away without perspective taking. in other words they're rooted, they're they're rooted the foundation of all of those things is the ability to take perspectives yeah those things are built on a foundation of perspective taking. yes so you know, yeah, it's perspective taking can be a powerful analytical and synthetic tool to mm -hmm. take things apart and bring people together, synthesize and all that. But it is also literally the foundation of empathy, compassion, caring, love, you know, all these getting kinds of things, getting others, along with others. So nicely. So that's the pattern. Yep. That's the move. That had a 447% increase in just by showing it the move and practicing the move. Remember, you can't just learn it conceptually. You have to practice it. You got to burn the neurons. Why do you have to burn the neurons? Because when you get in a complex situation where the shit hits the fan, where, crazy, where everything's crazy, where there's social pressures and chaos. social chaos or whatever, just or just like regular everyday life kind of stuff where you're thinking about all these different things that are happening – you're not going to do it if you're not practiced, right? You're going to you're going to go to your default. Well, you're we told you what your default is. Yeah. Right? Your default is not to take other people's perspectives or other things perspective. Yeah. Your default is not to be even explicit about the perspective that you have. Right. That tends to be most most of our defaults. So if we don't practice this move, and burn the neurons over and over again, just like we practice, you know, muscle. curling and build the build the muscle. Yes. You got to practice the move and burn the neurons and build the muscle. Because then it becomes automatic. Then, it, then automatic. in whatever situation you're in, you're gonna it's just fast. It's and just you're aware of it. Yeah. It's fast and it, it's already fast, but it's fast and you're aware of it. Yeah. Like it happens all the time, but now you're aware of it happening. Yeah. Which totally changes. And you everything. can purposefully use it. Yes. The pattern is very simple. It's perspective perspective taking. It's made up of a, a view and a point. Mm -hmm. The interaction of those two things, they're always there, no matter what, whether you like it or not, whether you see it or not, whether you acknowledge it or not, that's always happening. The move, it comes, you know, is P-circle. We just showed you that. And the question is, you know, what does X look like from different perspectives, different points of view? Yeah. Which is a question we should be asking ourselves a lot. We should ask that all the time about yes. about things that were that are important to us. Whatever is important to us, X is whatever is important to us. Yeah. You know what does it look like? 
What does this situation look like from different perspectives? Mm -hmm. What does this problem look like from different perspectives? What does this system look like? What does this person, you know, yeah. if we look at the situation from different perspectives, we're going to see different stuff. Find different solutions. Find different solutions. And connect to everybody else yeah. who's involved. Well, I think we've done it. I think we've definitely gone through everything that we wanted to tell you about perspectives. I think well, yeah, there's really lots more, but get started with the move and the yep. question. That's what you can do right away. Get started with the move and Just the question. See it everywhere. Just start seeing it in regular everyday things. Start seeing it in as you deal with regular everyday things and, you know, start looking at more complex things. I think the way to think about it is practice bringing it into your consciousness. Yeah. Practice being aware of it. Yeah. Like, what is the perspective I'm taking right now? Right? What is the perspective Johnny's taking, Bob is taking? Yeah. Ask them about their perspective. I, Try I to understand their perspective. Just get it into your daily life. Start practicing it. Start visualizing it. Yes. Um, make it real. Make it explicit. And then... You know, this is one of those ideas, all of D, I mean, I'm massively ADD and I get yes. bored pretty easily. And That's I'm, true. Uh, th these ideas are so deep, like the notion of the interaction between point and view making a perspective. And that that's related to the distinctions you make and the relationships that you see or don't see. Uh, and the way that you organize parts into whole at different levels of scale. I mean, that's. You can spend your whole life understanding the depth yeah. of that kind of stuff and, and just see more and more and more. So there's a long, there's a lot more to get out of these concepts. Mm -hmm. But, you know, the starting point, just like there's a lot more to get out of the gym, right? But like the starting point is like, do a push up, you yeah. know, and if you can't do a push up, you know, go on your knees and do a push up on your knees and, mm -hmm. you know. Uh, work your way up. Work your way up to doing push-ups and then do more push-ups. And pretty soon, like, a whole world opens up to you that is health and nutrition and all these kinds of things. Well, mm -hmm. the same is true in the fitness of your mind. Yeah. And if you practice these simple moves, these simple questions, like, to, all you have to do is be able to ask yourself these questions. Mm hmm you know, what is and is not X? Yeah. That's distinction question. You know, what what does X look like from different points of view? That's the P question. Yeah. Right? Yeah. What's the relationship between blank and blank? X That's the yeah. relationship question. Or yeah. how are the parts of X related is another relationship question. Or what are the parts of X? That's mm -hmm. a systems question. Or what, what is, is X a part of? What is X a part of? You know, that's a systems question. It's five simple questions. Really simple. Five um, moves. Yeah. And they're going to make all the difference. But you'll you'll start doing this. And within a day, you'll start seeing things that you didn't see before. And then within a week or two, like we've said in the other episodes, you'll just, you know, within a week, people will be like, oh, it's interesting. And then. Pretty soon you'll you'll wonder like how did I make it whatever number of years I've been on the planet without without doing this like yeah. this is so kind of amazing that this is all happening all yeah. the time. Well, and then it starts with something that is so simple but has such profound effects. Yeah. I mean that's the thing that is really remarkable about it for yeah. me is it's you know it's simple to implement and it has huge effects, yeah. huge effects. All right, so that's a wrap. On perspectives. Okay. Point view perspectives, viewpoint perspectives, all the perspectives. Um, this is when we have to remind people. First, we thank you. Thank you. Second, we ask you to like, subscribe, um, follow, download. Download, share with your friends. Share with your friends. Your friends should learn this That's, too. I think, I don't know. I, I think if you like the podcast, share it with your friends. Mm-hmm. Because, you know, we, we want to get the word out there about these amazing things and, and help people help themselves. Yes. This, this thing you have up here is free to use. And these moves and these questions are free to use. Mm -hmm. And, you know, it costs you nothing to have a remarkable ability 
all it costs you is a little bit of time and practice. That's right. And uh, and you can just have remarkable abilities. So and you should share that with your share friends. that with your friends and your family. And if you if you if you're getting something out of the podcast, then share it because we yeah. we really want to uh, have have as as big of a positive effect as possible. That is true. And on that, we will wrap. Wrap it. Thank you.